we'll see. So I watched, I rewatched Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, and El Camino. What I will call the Better Call Breaking Bad Camino. And that's the best I can do in how to call it. So this is like, why, I, why have I done this? Well, because I wanted to rewatch it. I want you to rewatch it because Bear Call Saul ended last year, I think. Is he a la yeah, I think it was last year. And I wanted to sort of do a big, uh, like an ultimate rewatch. Like, put it to bed, watch it from the first episode of Bear Call Saul to the spoilers. This is minor spoilers. At the end of Bear Call Saul, the last four or five episodes take place after Breaking Bad. So I've watched... All of Better Call Saul. Stopped at, uh, at the last four or five episodes. Watched all of Breaking Bad. Went back to Better Call Saul. And then I went and watched El Camino last. And I gotta say, it is well worth the trouble. Listen, fellas and ladies and everybody who loves this show, both these shows, love this franchise. Breaking Bad... Is kind of a different show if you watch it after Better Call Saul. Uh, in a surprising amount of ways. Uh, first of all, and minor spoilers, but I'm not going to spoil everything too crazy. But minor spoilers is, uh, like, the Gus stuff. In Breaking Bad, you sort of learn of all the sink in the cartel and the sort of drug world stuff from Walt's point of view coming into it. But if you watch Better Call Saul first, not only do you get to see uh, Saul and Mike's introduction into the world, but you also get to see where Gus was a couple years before in his ultimate uh, revenge plot. And when you get... Uh, so you see how, those, how they come into it. You get to see Gus uh, in his element... Uh, trying to build his company in the way he's trying to do it. He's trying how he tries to build the secret super lab, how he tries to get uh, uh, Mike to help him with certain jobs. You have to see the Saul and Mike relationship. How, cause when you learn in breaking bad, you learn that Mike is working for Gus, but uh, you meet Mike through Saul. And so you're kind of like, well, what's the situation? Cause you know, through Breaking Bad, that Gus and Saul, or that Mike and Saul have like a little bit of a history together, but you're like, they have a history together, but for some reason, Mike is Gus's, or Gus is Mike's boss, but not Saul's boss? Why is that? Uh, well, that's because, well, you learn about that in Better Call Saul, you get to sort of see how Saul and Mike met, how they sort of drift apart, come back together various times throughout the whole show, uh, and then you sort of see when they're officially saddled together because when Saul brings in Walt into this whole thing through Mike and Mike has to help Gus navigate Walt, that's when they're all officially saddled up together in one big, like, so it starts with Bear Call Saul, you get to that certain point, then you start Breaking Bad, and you start Breaking Bad completely coldish, kind of. You start from, okay, you know about that entire world, how it's all set up, and everything. Now, here's a random white guy. Boom. He has cancer. And then you sort of are... You're not even reintroduced to the world. You're just introduced to this milk toast man. And you slowly see him slowly uh, work his way up the ranks. When you meet Tuco again, now, now you've met Tuco a couple other times. You know why he's in prison. You know why he got out. You know why... Tuco is at this sort of low rung level uh, status at this sort of point because he's effing crazy for one, but also because of how much trouble he's gotten in recently. He's trying to keep a semi low profile at that point. <clears throat> so when Walt sort of meets him, you're like, oh, so now I'm no. Like, you get a better understanding of the power levels of everything. I think you do. Like, Breaking Bad does a perfect job of explaining certain power levels. Uh, and what I mean by that is, like, uh, like in superheroes and in games or whatever, you have, like, certain characters that are like, oh, man, like X-Men, for example. Uh, take Magneto and uh, Professor Xavier. Those are, like, high class, like, I, I forget what levels they, uh, like, what they say, but they're, they're, like, the most max mutant, like, super strong mutants. Uh, 
and just like above them, you can even put Jean Grey above them or at their level. But then below them, you probably put like a Cyclops and a Nightcrawler. Uh, no, not even. That's like two steps below. But you know what I mean? It's like Xavier and Magneto. One step below is like uh, that's more of like a Storm, a Nightcrawler, Mystique. And one step below that is like a Cyclops, Wolverine, Rogue, uh, and you know, and sort of like goes down like that. Similar situation with Bear Cold Soul Breaking Bad. Uh, you can see like Mike, Gus, Saul, and Walt are all on the same sort of power level. Walt has to get there, at, uh, but he, he thinks he's on the same level at least at that point. Throughout, well, that's an interesting thing. Walt comes off as way more arrogant and ridiculous in, in Breaking Bad after you've watched Better Call Saul because especially when you see sort of like the last episode before you have to start Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Walt, uh, I mean, Gus, Mike, and Saul are in a pretty dark and sad place. They're like, well, this is our life, and this is how we have to live our lives. And then Walt comes in. And then Walt's just like, you guys aren't doing good enough. And, it's, and they're just like, we're just trying to live and maintain. Uh, Saul, is, Saul is a different story in a way. Like, after all that, he sort of just falls deeper into that persona and becomes more and more of a, like, a, hey, I'm just making money. Whatever. Uh, and I love it. That's what makes it so good. Okay, so when Walt comes in, not only is he super arrogant, has nothing to lose because he's about to f and die, uh, but he's just like, this all sucks, I, I could do better. And then he gets mad when he tears it all down and then he has to build from scratch and he's like, well, man, it's pretty hard, Jesse. Uh, but I just love it. I love how that looks now. It's like, wow. Uh, it's, oh, man. Also, uh, the cartel leaders, like the big drink they have, uh, the, that Gus brings them, it's that drink, that uh, fancy liquor, that's the same liquor that uh, Kim and Saul drink throughout the entire series of Bear Call Saul. It's like the super expensive bottle of alcohol, and they keep the top of it because it's crazy, it's like spiky and weird, but also it's like a metaphor for like the fun, naughty times they've had. Not just... Uh, you know, not dirty, naughty. Just like you know, morally uh, fun or morally ambiguous uh, cons. But you know, low-level cons they've done in different bars and whatever. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. It's it's almost like a metaphor for death. <laughs> like, well, this is what happens when you keep going too crazy like this. Uh, obviously. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Kim and Skylar are kind of cool little mirrors for each other in a way because Kim, Kim is kind of like a person who kind of secretly loves the the stuff that Jimmy does. I don't know if he's, she secretly loves it, but she definitely doesn't have as much of a problem with it as you're sort of led to believe at first. You're led to believe that she has a huge problem with it. But I think the more that Jimmy gets away with, especially on Kim's behalf when he's doing it for her, I think that's, like, Kim likes it just a little bit, a little bit more. And so when it does, like, when it comes down to her and uh, Jimmy's uh, plot against Howard, then you're like, like, it's so perfect how they sort of show it. It's like, no, wait, well, maybe Kim wasn't against this the whole time. You, you're led to think that she holds the law at the similar standard as, like, uh, Howard or Chuck. And maybe she does on some level, but she also is very much impressed with how Jimmy uh, manages to pull off these crazy uh, antics and seemingly for the betterment of people, like some people. And I think it's sort of when the things they do start to actually hurt people beyond repair, that's when Kim has an issue uh, with it. <clears throat> and then with Skylar... Skylar is heavily, and almost to a fault, Skylar has issues, like, early on in Breaking Bad, uh, when Walt is, like, starting to smoke, like, mar marijuana, or so she thinks, she is causing a huge fuss about that, and when you talk, when, when it's brought to the attention of Hank, the DEA agent Hank, uh, the brother-in-law, he's like, 
oh, who cares? Who cares if he's smoking pot or whatever? It's, like, so funny. But Skyler is a little bit of, like, a huge moral police in uh, the early episodes of Breaking Bad. And I don't know if it is founded or not. I think she is a little too overbearing. But the fact of the matter is uh, Walt does sort of shackle her to this life. She, he's like, well, look, I'm going to make you take this money. Cause we, cause I, I'm not gonna have done all this for nothing, and she sort of has forced to play along with it. And yeah, she does. Like a lot of people hate on her because she cheated on Walt with, uh, what's his face, Ted. I don't hate on her for that. They don't even hate on Ted. I think some people even hate on Ted a little bit. I, don't, I they hate on Skyler way more. That was way. It's so weird. You can kill a bunch of people, watch a. Uh, Watch a woman die and choke on her own vomit. You can, uh, and and then be indirectly responsible for her father basically being an effing terrorist and killing like two planes full of people. Uh, but if you cheat on your husband, God forbid, you are dead to the world. Like people really did. I think there was like a top ten most hated characters in TV. Hold on, top ten most hated TV characters. Okay, so yeah, here it is. This was this comes from the Independent. Uh, I was trying to do the uh, Troy Krent, the Independent. Uh, that's from uh, Ted Lasso. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down and find Skylar because I know she's on here, and I'm I'm just pulling this out my my uh, my bottom here. Uh, oh, these are movie characters. Hold on, TV, TV, TV. Here we go, Ranker. Here we go. I think this is it. There's an official list. Don't you love that scroll noise? I don't know if you can hear it. All right, hold on, hold on. Gosh darn it. How are you going to do this to me? There's an official list from somebody. It was recent. This is from the Daily Mail. I hate that I'm opening it, but I'm, I'm clicking it. Okay, so this top 10 most hated TV characters... And let's see where Skylar ranks. Skylar is at number. There's not a chance she's number one. Nope. God dang it. I know she's on one. I think the Navy people took it off. Oh, here she is. Skylar White. On Google, it says Skylar White on there, but I know I saw a list that came out from some official publication. Skylar White was in the top 10 or so. Which was unfounded because her effing husband was making meth. Like, come on. And yeah, it's funny. I think people give uh, Walt and uh, at one point Gail a little too much credit for being like, oh, well, stinking, uh... yeah, it's meth, but it's pure meth. It, there's no adulterants, no, no, uh, no additives, no adulterants. Yeah. And, and, yeah, but it's the most pure meth ever. Mother ever. Doesn't matter if they're not being, uh, like, poisoned, if they're just going to do, like, way more of it, and it's going to be way better. I don't know. It's really kind of... Uh, I don't know. And it's so funny how much... I, I also love... It said, all right, so on this list, uh, Skylar White is number three, behind Ramsey Bolton and, Ro uh, and Joffrey Baratheon. Uh, and for those who haven't seen Game of Thrones... Joffrey Stinkin killed the main character at the end of the first season, and then Ramsey, uh, 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 he, he, he did some non-consensual things in Breaking Bad. Skylar White cheated on her husband who murdered people, and Stinkin makes meth for a living, and also forces her in terrible situations. So, I, uh, society's effed up. That's all I gotta say about that. Okay. But well, I think it's interesting how Walt has never done any of the meth ever. Even the episode in Fly, in, uh, the episode of Fly, I think. Yeah. Uh, when he's just sort of going crazy trying to find that fly, uh, Jesse's like, did you take any of our product? And he's like, don't be, don't be crazy, Jesse. No, I didn't do that. Uh, Walt is just, he's crazy. He, like, he poisons a child. Walt poisons a child. How's Walt not on the top ten most hated characters list? Not that I'm like, because he's a good well, he's a good character, but 
he why is he not hated when he's done way more despicable things? Skyler didn't poison that child. Like there's even like when he hit season five ish of Breaking Bad, when uh Walt is like Look, I just have to explain to Jesse why I had to poison a kid. It's like just that sentence is not okay. <laughs> you can't just say that. It's not even it's not even a thing. Uh so yeah, I think uh, where I most enjoyed this was probably season three and four of Breaking Bad, was because then you got to see Bear Call Saul and Breaking Bad finally, finally, finally morph and become one show. You're seeing a lot of, uh, yeah, you got a lot of Walt and Jesse, but you also get a lot of uh, Gus and uh, Saul and Mike, and they're all interweaving, they're all mingling and doing stuff, and it's so cool. And it's like, man, this really feels like the Avengers now. It feels like an era. And so it's like, the first chunk of Better Call Saul is like the prequel. Then Breaking Bad is the main meat to his, well, a, a point. But then I, I want to break it up from like season three to season four. That's a chapter. That's like almost a movie in a way. But like, that's a one big, like, this is where... Their main stuff happens. And season five of Breaking Bad is also kind of like a movie because it's like, that's when everything just effing blows up. Everything blows up in everybody's face and everybody, nobody gets out unscathed. Uh, but then when you go back to the last four or five episodes of Bear Call Saul, then it feels different. So it was always a very fun experiment when I was in the middle of Breaking Bad because now I felt like, okay, these shows have become, these two shows became one show and now we're in it. But then to hit season five and you see like that, now it, it's like now it feels like you're starting to see the dominoes fall. Because not only, so like when Breaking Bad ended, it felt like a big event. It felt like, wow, this is the end of the show. This is the end. But now it's not. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's the end of Walter White. But then after that, it's I don't even know if I want to call Bear Call Saul an epilogue because it does kind of feel like the end of Bear Call Saul is still very much part of that ending. Uh, if anything, I don't even know if I would consider El Camino an epilogue. I, it's more of an epilogue, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but Bear Call Saul, if, when you finish Breaking Bad and then you jump into those last five episodes... Uh, or four episodes, whatever it is, you'll find out. Uh, that's when it really does feel like, it feels like a soul movie. And that's where I think it, like, you jump back in, you're, you're not meeting with soul, you're with Eugene, quote unquote, Eugene in Nebraska. And you're like, you sort of had to pick up the pieces of like, what the heck is going on? And then you sort of get that. And then you get flashbacks to Breaking Bad. Now, uh, I'll mention this later. But, no, I'll mention this now. So here's the thing about this. When you watch Bear Call Saul, everybody's older than they were in Breaking Bad. So when you... <laughs> which is so strange. Time-wise, you gotta do a lot of mental gymnastics to try to, like, make it normal. And they do their best with certain wigs and stuff, but some people are like, God dang. So you watch Bear Call Saul, they're all older than they are in Breaking Bad. So then when you see them in Breaking Bad, like, Saul, Mike... And Gus all look like baby faces. I thought Mike was going to be the better one because he always looked old. No. Thinking apparently 10 years of gravity does some pulling on you. Uh, and he's good. He looked, I think, uh, for the record, everybody's performances and also as a show entirely, Bear Call Saul is the better show. Hands down, better show. Because, but it's also different. It's a different show. Breaking Bad is way more action-packed and things are going on more often. Bear Call Saul, they will make a meal out of nothing for a while sometimes. And it's good. I love Bear Call Saul. Uh, and I think that you have to do that for a necessity uh, because, you know, they got to fill up that time. Like, what, what the fudge did Saul do for those however many years before Bear Call Saul is uh, from Breaking Bad? Uh, but Breaking Bad, because especially when you hit the fifth season, uh, things are happening fast. It's like, Things are literally blowing up right now. Whoa. Uh, and then when you follow back on Saul in the black and white world, and then you get these flashbacks of Breaking Bad, it feels like, wow, this is like 
This is, it, it feels like a landing. It feels like a real, actual landing. And I, that's not to say the finale of Breaking Bad wasn't satisfying, wholly satisfying. It most certainly was. But this just makes it more satisfying how we're doing It's literally like, now let's bring this plane and let's land it real nice and snug into that hangar right there. Yeah, look at that. No, not too much room. Just enough. Uh, but yeah, there are flashbacks in, uh, in Bear Call Saul to Breaking Bad and... It's cool. The only uh, thing is, they <laughs> having watched Breaking Bad, and then you go to Better Call Saul where they're back to being old again, it matches all right, except for a couple of flashbacks that happen during Breaking Bad. Like, there's a flashback where you see Mike and Saul having a discussion, and Mike is trying to talk Saul out of trying to get Walt into this whole thing. Uh, and Saul is just sitting there thinking... I can't help myself. I gotta get him into it. This is a lot of money on the table. Uh, but that's when you see the gravity weighing down on F and Mike. Oh my god. Uh, but still, it's fine. For the most part, uh, the age stuff doesn't... It's not too hindering. Uh, yeah, they do look considerably older in Bear Call Saul, but since Bear Call Saul, the final episodes take place after Breaking Bad, it's not too bad. It's only a little more jarring once they do the flashbacks. There's one where uh, Aaron Paul comes back as Jesse for a flashback. I'm like, you're not acting how you have acted in season two. I know, because I just watched season two. But then in, uh, I think it's in El Camino, it might be. It's either, I think it's in El Camino, where he does act a little more like old Jesse. Or it might have been in uh, another flashback, I forget. So I don't know what that was all about. Like, when they walked back into the RV after they got Saul the first time, he was not acting like Season 2 Jesse. I'm sorry, he was not. He was acting like El Camino Jesse uh, in that one scene. But, yeah. Uh, then you sort of see things wrap up with, uh, with Saul and all of them. You get to see Kim come back. And then, that's what also feels weird, is, like, you know Saul and Kim split for a long time, but when you watch it this time, like, with the Saul episodes after Breaking Bad... Uh, it feels like, oh my god, Kim. You almost forgot she existed. And then you're like, oh wait, Kim. And then she becomes wholly super important immediately, all over again. Dude, dude, I'm telling you. Bear Call Saul, then Breaking Bad, then Bear Call Saul again, those last few episodes. That is effing gold, brother. Like, in... Breaking Bad is perfect. It is still elevated. Elevated with Bear Call Saul. Because Bear Call Saul, guess what? Is also pretty darn perfect. Uh, Jacob would disagree about uh, how Nacho and... Uh, what, you, what you call it? Nacho and Lalo's story wraps up. He says he probably would say it's not the most perfect. But I think that's literally his only complaint. Other than that, they're both pretty perfect. Uh... So then El Camino. El Camino is also pretty good. I wouldn't say perfect, but it does have some things to it that I do like a lot. Uh, one, you get to sort of, like, El Camino is a fish, like, Breaking Bad tickled Western a lot. And sometimes it did, like, yeah, this is full Western. El Camino is almost full Western. Like, uh, it's like the, the man on the run... He needs help, and he gets help from, like, and you get to see, like, a final farewell, a final farewell from Badger and Skinny Pete. Uh, Skinny Pete is ten years older than Badger and Jesse, which I did not know uh, at first, but you can kind of see it in El Camino, which is fine. I love how Skinny Pete's like, you're my hero, Jesse, and that's why I'm going to help you this much. And uh, I love how El Camino wraps up the, the leftover characters. You're like, man... I wish I had a little wrap-up with them. Uh, they even bring Todd back. I love that Todd's basically like the second lead of the movie. Because uh, it's like, oh, I hate you. I hate you, Todd! Uh, they bring back uh, Jesse's parents for a brief thing. Uh, uh, they bring back the the junkyard guys. Old Joe. Yeah. Uh and that's also what I like about the, the tacked on Bear Call Saul and El Camino. Because you do get either some verbal snippets about what happened to some of the characters that you just didn't get to see again. Or you get uh, 
literal you get to see them again one last time and then you get and then it's like all right see you guys uh and that's the one thing that you don't get in breaking bad and breaking bad when Walt's done the show's done uh you don't get to see or figure out what ha- like for years people thought Hill was just stuck in that safe house because uh, no spoilers but th- they didn't know if anybody knew he was in there and then it came out yeah he'll go off scot free he's just in uh, louisiana uh they don't know where qb is they couldn't get bober back and uh that was it that was it on that uh and I do like it. I I love that uh, the show uh, the shows take place in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, for the most part. And you see a lot of desert, a lot of bare, barren desert. And if you think about it, Walt, Jesse, and Saul all go to a place of snow. Uh, Walt goes to I think New Hampshire briefly because he comes uh, he comes back. Uh, but that's covered in snow. Uh, Saul goes to Nebraska, covered in snow. And Jesse goes to Alaska, covered in snow. They are all like, we're done with the desert. Yeah. Next on, uh, let's see. So El Camino is pretty good. It looks so pretty. It looks like a movie, obviously. They gave them actual movie cameras. And it's so weird because... Not a Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul is shot bad. Not a chance. But it's just, uh, you can really, uh, you can really get a sense of, like, uh, the difference between a television camera and a film camera, though. Because, like, you're literally looking at the same deserts that you've been looking at for so long, but you're looking at that film camera from Netflix? It's like, okay, that desert looks good. Uh, but yeah, I do like El Camino. I do think it's a little thin plot wise for how long it is. I don't know if it needed to be a full two hours. Uh, but it is still pretty good. You, you get to deal with uh, Robert Forrester one more time, the vacuum repair cleaner guy, which I think that is really cool because, uh, well, for one, he died before he could make any more appearances on Bear Call Saul. So if you watch it in this way, uh, he gets a mention in the Bear Call Saul bit at the end. And then you get to see him again in El Camino. So this sort of seems like, oh, so maybe it sort of plants the seeds of what Jesse's going to do. And, and also the Bear Call Saul ending, they just like, they found Jesse's car out in the Mexico or whatever, or something like that. Uh, and then you find out later in El Camino what actually happened and what they found in Mexico, etc. So that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, El Camino. And Breaking Bad, and Bear Call Saul, all together make probably the greatest story ever told. I told Jacob that, and he was like, "No, Attack on Titan is the greatest story ever told." And I still have yet to watch Attack on Titan. I I will though. I will one day. But Breaking Bad, or what I'm going to call the Better Call Breaking Bad Camino. That's just the way to watch the show. It's way more satisfying. It feels like an experience. I felt empty at like I felt so empty after it was over. I was like, God, man, I miss it. I miss it. Uh, and then I started watching leftovers again because I had to find something to give me that taste of just prestige. Uh, but yeah, I love it. Love the shows. Love all of them. Each of them. Uh, yeah, and I love El Camino. I do think El Camino doesn't end quite as strong as Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, but also it's, it's more of an epilogue. I don't know if it's supposed to end that way. El Camino, it's literally just supposed to give you the visual satisfaction of knowing for sure that Jesse is going to a better place. You get, uh, you get a hope that he will be in a better place at the end of Breaking Bad, but you never know for sure. Uh, this is literally meant to just be like, look, Jesse is going to have a happy ending. And we are going to make positive that you know that. And we're going to give you one more chance to see some of these characters that you love that you maybe didn't get to see what happened to them after Breaking Bad. And then that's it. And then we clean up and we close shop. And that's it. And I, I do appreciate that. Like, it's not trying to be more than what it is. It's literally like, well, we're just going to be like a little epilogue. 
and then and then it's over, and you get to see Jane one more time, and in a flashback. So it's really good. I, I think it's perfect. So if you want to watch, if you if you've never seen it before, I I recommend it watching it this way. If you have seen them all before, but maybe you haven't tried it watching it this way, I guarantee it. I guarantee you, you will be satisfied. You will be. It is not a bad experience. It is actually a really good experience. It's a transcendent experience. Uh, for one, they're all just great shows to watch. They're also easy shows to watch. And when you do start to make some of these little connections that uh, you didn't know were there, it's it becomes like, wow, I guess, like, you during Breaking Bad, they used to say we didn't. We just sort of wrote as we went along. We didn't really plan things out too much, but it felt like it. This makes it really feel like it. It makes it feel like wow, you guys really uh, like. They must have a binder full of everything they've ever referenced, and like, oh well, can we do this? Oh no, we can't do that because of this. But like literally, I don't know how they keep track of all the things they do and all all the little Easter eggs they manage to juggle around. Uh, I love like even when you're you know. You're th- fleshed out with the, the the crime world. The Better Call Saul also fleshes out a little bit about the the law world, and you meet Hank at one point a little bit in Better Call Saul. So then when you meet him again, Hank and Gomi again, it's like oh, and it's it's just really good. It's it's very good. That's all I can say. Duh, it's, it's great, it's spectacular. Watch it. Watch Better Call Breaking Bad Camino. You'll love it. All right, that's all I gotta say about that. I'm gonna play some music. I might even leave, uh, cause I just I talked for a long time. So yeah, uh, 